recording on. <coughs> life giving nicotine will give me the thing I need. Yes, life. <laughs> or a simulacrum thereof. Thereof, yes. Or maybe a little guy, like in a, a homunculus, yeah. who can run a simulacrum of me. That would be the best thing ever. It would. It a would homunculus be. that you could just go, I don't want to do it today. Bam. Bam. And you the, go into yeah. the simulacrum of me and do my shit. Yeah. Open the chest up. And crunch. And the homunculus yeah. crawls in. Okay, buddy. And pulls the gears and levers. I will require one of your hairs, sir. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do with it? I might eat it, but I might do some evil magics with it. Yeah. You will never know. And right. then there's a steampunk version of yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. So he goes and does it washing up and goes to work for you. And and some turds at work like the steampunk version of you better yeah. than you. Yeah. We don't mention who yeah. they are. Yeah. Shirley from yeah. accounts. Uh, 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 and uh. Shirley from accounts with you. Oh, I like your pipes. Fuck you. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so you, 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 mind blown. This could be happening to you now. You may be your own simulacrum who killed the real you. That could happen. I wish you hadn't brought that up. <laughs> See. See? See, you don't fucking know shit, is I what we're wish, saying. I wish we, you could just leave that shit alone. Yeah, please. you know what? This reminded me, I went to Catholic school, right? <laughs> in the deep, dark past. <laughs> and in one of our religious education classes. By the way, you, know, you attend the... the <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> the senior years of school, hmm. we spent more time on religious studies than like maths or English or science. That's right. Because we're a Catholic school, That's and they right. wanted us to know. Which, mind you, given that it's the cornerstone of oh. Western civilization, is not a complete waste of time. Absolutely. You understand where we came from. Like, one of my all time favorite films is Jesus of Montreal, French Canadian In film. Really interesting film, that one. Yeah. Really interesting. I like it just from an actor point of view and a performer point the of view. The priests loved it. Yeah! They loved the shit out of it. I thought they would hate it to bits. No, no, no. But they it's loved good. the shit out of it. They said, oh, if it was going to be today, that would be it. That yep. would be it. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. And, you and know, they would show it to us. It was weird. You'd go to, oh, we've got to go into bloody Woden because Jesus of Montreal's playing. Come on, kids, get on the bus. And come, what? And I, 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 Five I went, bucks a pop. You just can't, yeah. right, I, I went to share it with some of my heathen friends who'd gone to state schools their whole life, never been to church, and they were enjoying it because it's a good movie mm. with good acting. Mm. And I suddenly realised they weren't getting the layers. And I go, that guy, he's the devil. He's tempting. That's Jesus in the with, desert. And he's, you know, yeah. saying, if you yeah. do the thing, you know, and if yeah. he agrees, it's all yeah. going to be very yeah. bad. And the model, she's... Mary Magdalene, the whore, the prostitute. Same. Jesus is saving the whore. From, you know, and I'm having to explain all the subtext of the movie because they've never read the fucking Bible, the heathens. So, <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> but back at Catholic school, while they're making us read the Bible non-stop, I, this kind of pissed me off because I think the one thing that let this bastard get us was technology hadn't been that advanced because this was back when... You, you had know, to actually read out of paper. We were charcoal on cave yeah, walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how old to, we are, right? You had, to, you had to, like, you know, puff smoke signals. Yeah. That was texting. Yeah. Hello, smoke signals across the school. do you want to go to the movies next week? Yeah. But oh, what, okay. what, what he did, because one thing that a lot of the uh, religious and conservative people don't like is ambiguity. Whether it's moral ambiguity, uh, they like to say relativism is a bad thing. They'll talk about moral relativism. Like there is black and white, good and evil. And yes, there are truly good people and there are truly evil people. Uh, there are some people who've been painted as good who are kind of fucked up. That's Mother true. Teresa, for those who don't know, didn't believe in God by the end. Mm. Her life was... She kept up a PR front. Yes, she did. But her diaries revealed after she died, she'd lost faith completely. Yep. Uh, she had enough by the end. Yeah. And some people who are painted as evil, are, it's really just because they're on the losing side in a given conflict. Pretty much. But, um, Pretty much. If you are, like, say... A military dictator who likes a bit of a sword and shield action in your medieval times and you lose. Yeah. Then that's not good for your 
historical place. Yeah. They'll talk about all the peasants you killed and the millions of people who died under you. But if you won, they hey. won't talk about the millions oh, of peasants. Don't worry about that, mate. Yeah, you're in, mate. You're Seriously. In. You're the, a Tudor king. You're kicking ass. Booyah. The, the difference between the winners and the losers is just they were winners and losers. They killed as many people as cruelly as fuckly. So anyway, this guy, uh, he was... has never changed. No, it's, it's the world by today, the way, kids. By the by way, the way, by, by the, the way, way, just a tip. Yeah. Oh look, <laughs> While you're riots in Tunisia, riots in Egypt, freedom, democracy, they're using social networking, that's awesome, go, go, go. Oh, riots in England, using social networking, evil, bad, wrong, no, our authority is good authority, don't Clearly. fight our authority, Clearly. it's good, Obviously. don't fight it. What are you what? doing? Yeah. What are you doing? You know, Kicking the shit out of shops to get stuff that you've been much? told to do on the ads, you bastards, what are you oh. doing? That's ridiculous. Look, it's notwithstanding, a, a bunch of those people doing the riots in England are fucking tools, right? So what? You, you throw know, a stick and hit a tool. You know, you throw a stick and hit a tool. You aren't supposed to steal shit. No. For example, no. yeah. For example, you know, our country is made on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You <laughs> steal know, shit and you'll end up in Australia. So, you know. Yeah, fucking good deal, actually. Yeah, it was, actually, um, at the end of the day. <laughs> end of the day. But our whole society, right, you will never see those rights in Australia because our whole society is predicated on the idea that we are descended from criminals and criminals steal shit. And you will notice that our whole society is predicated on the idea that you always have enough, just enough, to eat. Mm. You always have enough, just enough, to live. And if you go out and steal shit because of um, um, it means you're greedy. Yeah. And um, you're not allowed to do that. But in Australia, the wealth distribution has always been, always been, so that those on the very bottom have enough to survive. But yeah. when you get into places like Britain, it is actually different. It is actually yeah. not the same. And a lot of those people don't have shit, yeah. um, and they don't have enough to get anything. So yeah. that um, you're in a situation where these people are told by their, you know, we go into a world slowdown of, of money and that happens, but the corporates want to sell stuff because that's what they got to do, and that happens, and then they get the ads on the telly, which everyone's got, and have they say, this, buy this, this, have this, buy this, do it now, freaking get it, or you're, you're a loser, get it and you'll be cool. And get it on credit, get it on credit, get it on credit, it'll be fantastic. Get your phone on credit, get everything on credit. Oh, keep paying a little bit. Oh, you've run out of stuff, but still get stuff because you'll be cool. You've got to get cool stuff. You've got to get it. You've got to get because they're pushing stuff out the door to try desperately to yeah. stay afloat. And then you're getting these messages when you're sitting in a shithole in East London. Yeah. But anyway, you know, again, we're, it's not like we're next. not saying the looters are assholes. The looters are assholes. assholes. Right. But when, oh, honestly, the, the reactions I've seen from some people online, on Facebook and Twitter, oh, just oh, shoot the cunts. Right, right. Fuck you, you stupid fucking wanker. What, for minor property infractions you should kill someone? And well over 90% of these people... They're minor. They stole a couple of hundred or maybe a thousand or two thousand quid worth of stuff. It's fucking minor. Where's the outrage for these cunts in suits in the banks and whatnot who've stolen billions? The ones who threw a combination of criminality, stupidity, laziness and greed destroyed world economies. Why aren't we fucking shooting them? Why are we so angry about someone who stole a couple thousand quid and we're letting people who stole a couple billion fucking walk? And yes, oh look, there's been heart-wrenching pictures. Oh look at that business that got burnt to the ground. That pub that had been there for hundreds of years has burnt down. The fucking Tories are going to drive hundreds of businesses into the ground. Hundreds of family businesses are going to go broke. They're going to go to the fucking wall. Schools, hospitals, libraries are going to get fucked over by the Tories. Where's the outrage over that? Fuck you, people! They are black, though. Yeah, some of them were. You know. I you saw. Know, those looters. Yeah. Well, you know, come on. Yeah. Get you real. Get your water cannon out for them. Oh. Hey, you know what? I was talking about my high school principal before we cut off yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. But it's all related, people. I know, it's weird. It's related. It's... Man, the links are there is what we're saying. Exactly. You'll know this if you had a Catholic education. Yeah. And what my high school principal didn't like was relativism. Which is bizarre because my high school principal fucking loved it. 
which is weird, it, right? Both because Catholic. No, oh, yeah, highly, highly, extremely Catholic, right? Um, and he would tease both us and the the conservative priests in his school with Augustine questions, which <laughs> you will now. Because this is the classic for me, and, and I've done one video ranting on atheist bigots, tools on the internet particularly, who say solely because they proclaim that they're an atheist, they're automatically smarter than anyone who says they believe in God, which is fucking idiotic. Because the just world's just greatest bullshit. philosophers and scientists mm. have been religious. A lot of them, and most of them in fact, yeah. most of them up until very recently. And even in the current world, you know, good, good old biological and physical scientists, the people who, you know, have proven evolution and whatnot, still believe in God. You know, a lot they're of researching yeah. string theory, still believe in God. Not all of them, um, but the, a lot of them. The idea that no one smart believes in God is stupid. It's ridiculous. Yes, it's ridiculous. And and and, and there's, a, there's a lot of atheist scientists now who are, who obviously are atheists um, who have made peace with their religious brothers because <laughs> they're all about the science and they can keep it separate to their yeah. own personal beliefs. Um, there are some who can't. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but you know, the people are people. You know, but being an atheist or being a religious person doesn't guarantee that you're either smart or a dickhead. You can be either. Mm. But see, what my high school principal threw out was, is there any such thing as an absolute truth? And we were the reasonably smart kids and we said, well, no, not really. You know, everything's sort of subjective and arguable. And he goes, well, how about this? Are you alive? And we were fucking 15, 16 year old high school kids, right? Before the internet. Most importantly, before, before the, the Matrix. Right, right, right. Right? No fucking kid is no, gonna exactly. fall for that shit. Exactly. Now, right? now, now you've got your post Matrix Neo, you can kind of get fucked, baby. Yeah, your smart ass high school teacher says, Oh, is there an absolute truth? And you say no, and he says, Well, how about this? Are you alive? You go, I don't know, I might be in the Matrix. I might be a computer simulation that's so well written. I think I'm real. Now I'm just going to stop my brother here because my high school principal used to hit us with this. Are you alive? Yes, sir. How do you know that I didn't take all of your thoughts, all of your memories and all of your ideas and put them in an electric bowl? How do you know that I'm not a scientist who's playing with your mind from the um, very big uh, Cyrac computer in Canberra? How do you know that? Yeah. How do you know anything yeah. apart, from your, um, apart from your sensations? You know, I can put a hood over your head and fool your, fool your sensory system. We do it all the time here to, 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 to play games and drama. And Hey, Aitzi, you do the drama all the time. You know this. And so he would, he would throw the Matrix question at us and yeah. fucking blow our minds, right? <laughs> and that is the two trains of thought you get almost anywhere. I lock everything in a box or I open up the whole big <laughs> no. world. Yeah, and that's, that is very much the Catholic way, right? Yeah. You get you know, smashed into a, a hole or fucking bang, there's the universe. God made yeah. it cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so what we're saying, people, is it's complicated. Yeah. Life, and I'll, I'll steal a line, probably not for the last time in this little discussion, mm. I'll steal a line that the Vlogbrothers use uh, the truth resists simplicity. Oh, God, that was a brilliant line. I it love is, that line. As, the what, truth resists simplicity. <laughs> yeah. It's like, the, uh, you know, I'll use a Star Wars line. Obi-Wan saying to Darth Vader, the tighter you squeeze your fist, the more systems will slip between your fingers. Nice. The more you try and crush something down and control it, the more it's going to escape from your control. And you had a jolly fun rant the other day about the riots in England. <laughs> And the main thing that's making people lose their fucking mind is they're scared of chaos. Yep. People fool themselves yep. into thinking the chaos is controlled. Yep. The forces of society keep chaos at bay. Yep. For a fucking moment, maybe, at any given second, a completely random event can turn your fucking life upside down. Talk to people who are in the Twin Towers. That's yeah. why conspiracies about 9-11 exist. Because people are too scared to admit a bunch of camel jockeys from the desert can crash a plane into your most prized symbol of your capitalism and destroy it. It can fucking happen. Random shit that you can't control I can have, happen. I have lived on the thin ice. Everyone, like, walks on the ice of our society knowing that it's solid. There are some solid shit in there, and it's not. 
I have walked on the thin ice and heard it cracking under my feet long enough in my life and I have fucking fallen through <laughs> many, many times and it wasn't my fucking fault, right? I'm serious, I'm serious, it wasn't my fault. It was like just randomly, nah, you're fucked, son. Oh, that's a bummer. I appear to be drowning in the frozen lake of chaos. And I understand that at any second, at any time in the day and night, the chaos is everywhere. It is all around the place. And so you see people losing their fucking minds at the, the looters and the rioters. It's because of this fear of the chaos coming close to them. I mean, you don't have to be next to it in London to freak out. I mean, you would. <laughs> but I would look. You know, I would freak right the fuck out, <laughs> and I'd be really angry if I was there being yeah. affected by it. Make absolutely, no absolutely. You know, if it was if it was in my freaking street, I'd be losing my shit. But you know, just seeing it exist reminds people that it exists everywhere, and that it's close to them, and that it shouldn't be. You know, and especially in here in Australia, you get Australians losing their shit over it because in our psyche. England is the solid place where we come from. Even hundreds of years later, it's the solid place that started out the white guy journey to Australia. So, you know, it's a, it's a thing that will never, uh, uh, never not exist. It's, 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 um, it's um, a cornerstone. Um, and to see it just um, um, randomly f uh, fracture uh, and, 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 uh, and burn, um, will make people lose their fucking minds because here in Australia where we have fucking shit all hold over the weather uh, bugger all hold over any of our infrastructure at any one time you know fucking we know we know that every year there's something coming to fuck us up wholesale you know yeah. we know that it's there's coming there's gonna be bushfires <laughs> there's, there's gonna, gonna be, be floods there's, there's gonna be droughts there's gonna be fucking cyclones that fuck our shit up you know, and sometimes we'll get all, all, all at once because that's uh, that's living in Australia. Just mate. the way shit happens. You know, and, you know, we, and, 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 you know we, we, we know that's coming. Um, and so it's bizarre because we can handle that kind of chaos yeah. because that's, I guess, the chaos of the gods. I mean, that's, you know, your shit all, um, uh, your shit out of luck if the gods strike you down with a cyclone. I mean, sorry, mate. Um, you know, try again. Um, well, well done, you live. Good on you. But, um, it's the chaos of the society, the thin veneer of society we put on our, our, our world. If that cracks, then people really fucking lose it. Yeah, and, um, they really do. Um, here in Australia, that we've got that thin veneer of society, but we also have a little bit of knowledge of uh, the, the, our criminal past. We all, every time we get a gold medal in the Olympics, doesn't it feel like we fucking stole it? <laughs> Doesn't it feel good that a country of like 20, 22 million people, yeah. right, of fuck all people, that's us, right, who know nothing and can have nothing, yeah. fucking went to the world with all these huge, rich, expensive countries and they're fucking, fucking hundreds of people yeah. in their team and they turn up and go right around the arena three fucking times yeah. and we went in and we fucking got it. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like we stole it? And I think it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Really and some people ask, why do Australians get so worked up about the Soccer World Cup? Because we're shit at soccer, right? And Absolutely. we re refuse to accept it. People refuse to accept we can't compete that well mm -mm. on the world level. Mm -mm. And people say, fucking, you punch above your weight and everything else. Why don't you just chill out? Because that's not what we do! <laughs> we just walk in and say, hey, you're better than us at this and stuff. We're still going to win. Yeah, right. Kidel Evans won yeah. the Tour de France. Well done, Kidel. Okay, and you know, I'm in two minds about that because <laughs> who fucking cares, honestly? You know, I don't like any sport, but you know, he's he's a little, he's a Aussie battler, right? Right? Because the fucking Tour de France. The definition of. Yeah, the Tour de France is controlled by the Euros, right? Um, Lance Armstrong uh, did it on steroids um, for years, which was nice, but there's been a few Australians over the years who have been good enough to win the Tour de France uh, and should have won the Tour de France and they got fucked over by their own team. Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Nothing, yeah. nothing. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. And they got screwed over by the Euros who were supposedly on the same team as them mm. because an Australian wasn't quite up to it. So yeah, good good on you, Cadell Evans, for winning the Tour de France. I just don't fucking care. Like, someone was saying they're going to name a bridge after him here in Melbourne. It's like, 
Nice bridge. Whatever. It's a good bridge. Which bridge is it? I, it's a know. bridge. It's you huge. know, it's a bloody bridge with bikes on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you I tell you, I bet Janelle Evans goes through fucking red lights. I reckon. Okay. Goes. I reckon. Rides on the footpath. Mate. Yeah. 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 I reckon in lycra. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. Spandex up his butt crack. He probably, well, he's probably just done that. Yeah. That's probably not news. We've yeah. probably seen that. Yeah. We're probably across that. Yeah, I mean, I reckon he, if you reckon he'd be riding Melbourne, he'd probably wear, wear pants and a big hat and a well, fake beard. In fact, no, he doesn't even have to go with the sunglasses and fake beard. If Cadell Evans wants to maintain his anonymity, mm. he just has to wear normal human clothes. That's what I'm saying. It's only when he puts the spandex on that. Oh, it's Cadell Evans! It's Cadell Evans! It's Cadell Evans. 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 Evans! But if he wears jeans and a t shirt, no one's going to know it's him. Yeah, oh, he goes through red lights. Yeah, that, that'll be the giveaway. Yeah. That'll be the giveaway. That's that one of those riding pricks that goes through red lights. Hang on a minute, I've seen him fucking <laughs> kissing a French <laughs> chick. Yeah. I've fucking seen yeah. him spraying champagne on cunts. He, that's, he's that fucking... I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to go Cadell Heavens hard just because of the bloke who... Oh, that's not on! He's, he, he's done Australia proud! That's but, all you got! Though, though I will, I'm also in two minds about going him hard because he did actually win the Tour de France, which is... Oh, which is fucking which awesome! Is fucking hard to Look, do. I mean, as, a, as, an, as an effort actual, of human endurance? Exactly, as an actual achievement, it's pretty fucking good. Hey, look, there's a fat wanker on the internet saying Cadell Evans sucks. He no, knows what he's talking about. No, he can ride fucking 1,200 kilometres faster than he can on Earth. Well done him. Up and down mountains, for Christ's sake. Fuck that Who shit. Who does that shit? Fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. Oh my god! <laughs> I know one of those time trials would fucking kill me. No, look, I, I can ride, I live in like, secure, I can ride two suburbs I into can't work. ride a bike! <laughs> you can't even walk. That's man. true, but, but you know. <laughs> so, I, I'm so, in two minds about going hard. Yeah. I, I just needed to get a reaction, because you know, what's on Australian? Is there anything that highlights someone is a bigger fuckwit? Then when they call you un-Australian or un-American or the British don't, did the British have some? They, they just say it's not proper. They don't. No, not since the um, not since the seventies. Not since the, yeah. the diversification of the mm. of the peeps. They just don't do un-British anymore. Only the UDL does un-British. But it's I I Muslim instantly. Guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Muslim grey guns. They were out in force last night. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but. Seriously, if, if you ever want to be completely written off by me, you pull that ridiculous line of, oh, un-Australian. In fact, although Americans do do un-American, I, I get all my news from the Daily Show and the Colbert Report because it's the only trustworthy news source out of the US. That's shocking. Which is, I'm not even joking. That's they shocking. do the most intelligent, insightful, truthful analysis of news and politics in the US and they're a comedy show. That's ridiculous. And that's what, um, when the other journos are upset yep. that Stewart's, John Stewart's got more credibility than them, mm. and when they call him to task on something, and he goes, the fuck are you going me for? I'm a comedian. You know, the show before me is a glove puppet, and the one after is pranks where people have poo thrown at them. So, you know, you know. Why, why are you holding me to a journalistic standard? And they go, oh, that's a cop-out. No, you dicks, it's not a cop-out. He's a comedian, and he's better than you. It's just shocking. And, you know, Al Jazeera English. Um, Which is fast becoming one of the go-to news has sources. Been, has been placed above BBC World Service for the first time this year. Uh, they are starting to do really good work. Earlier this year, they were actually outpacing BBC World Service in accuracy, um, uh, in timing, uh, as in getting news to the peeps, yeah. and in pace yeah. um, of the change of news. As, as details change, they, mm. they updated faster than BBC World Service. Yeah. And... BBC World Service nearly shat itself because Al Jazeera English is well. BBC World Service is, is classically the best world world news is the best news in the world. They basically have that that title, mm. and they want it, and they don't want to let it go, and it's theirs, and they make fucking sure of it. Yeah, yeah they they work hard at maintaining their reputation. Right? They really don't fuck around with that. And if you are a BBC journalist and you get caught in a lie. 
they have parliamentary inquiries about it. Yeah. They don't fucking like it. They will rip yes. your balls out through your nose and you'll eat them. It's, it's um, like, you know, which, which is really weird to Americans yeah. who are used to people on news. And it's not just Fox. We always pick on Fox mm. News. But it's all of them. They just say shit for sensationalism. And, or they just repeat press releases from politicians or corporations and call it being a journalist. But there are some people who have proper standards. Actually, another topic I'd like to go on to. <clears throat> Rupert Murdoch, who's going to stop this shit he was doing for the last couple of years because his back's against the wall in a really big way. Big way but prior to News of the World and the phone hacking and all that shit taking his attention a bit, he and his kids were making a concerted effort to attack the BBC and in Australia the ABC. Absolutely. For those who don't know, if you're from America or another country where you don't have a good quality government-run news organisation, uh, those organisations are paid for by taxpayers and they're supposed to be impartial, they're supposed to serve all these public good things, but basically they are not driven by economics. Now, New York Times, Murdoch, all the media people are starting to think, maybe we should start charging for our news online. And they have been against monopoly laws and collusion laws going behind closed doors and talking to each other saying if we all did it at the same time they'd have to pay right ah except the bbc and the abc they will never do it because they're government run they don't charge for their news so that will butt fuck uh, the commercial organisations charging for news on the internet. And if BBC doesn't do it, Al Jazeera English won't fucking do it. So, this derails all their plans to charge for news on the internet. Big time. So, uh, Murdoch had his whole empire out there hammering the BBC and the ABC saying they were bad and wrong. And for the sole, one and only purpose of getting their stuff off the internet, because both the BBC and Australia's ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, the British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, were doing more and more stuff on the internet, not less, which was freaking the commercial entities out no end. And they, they had spent a year or two really aggressively attacking the BBC and the ABC. That's all gone to shit now, That's because the their back's against the wall so badly That's at the moment. That's just gone. But, you know, always you know, look beyond what someone's saying. And everyone makes this mistake, whatever their political persuasion. When you see a story that fits bang, slap bang into your ideology and reinforces everything you believe, take a good fucking look at it. <laughs> take a, yeah, take a, make an axe to it. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's something really wrong. <laughs> look, I, what I remember from lefties, uh, from uh, early in the Bush Gulf War 2, Bush 2 Gulf War 2, invasion of Iraq, right? Yep. Uh, all the, the people who hadn't been scared into jumping on board, who were still taking you know, the progressive or left-wing view of, no, I'm against this war, it's wrong, they're doing the wrong thing. A story broke that really got legs on a lot of the left-wing uh, news sites and blogs uh, in the US. You might not have even heard this because it died pretty quickly. But what it was is that uh, a story got out that the death toll was actually much higher, of US service people, was much higher than the administration was letting on because what they were doing was flying critically injured people out of Iraq as fast as they could and landing them in the base in Germany, which was the closest Ramstein, base. Ramstein, my favourite base in all the world. And because then when they died at Ramstein, they weren't counted in the Iraq toll. Oh, those bastards, those bastards, those bastards, until it emerged. That Not they true. Been Didn't completely happen. Untrue. Not even once. Never happened once. And anyone who was injured in Iraq, like you finger it, and you got home for six months and you got septicemia, you were counted as dead in the Gulf War. Yeah. But this really took off. All oh, they oh, proof. They're killing you. The death toll's twice as high as they're saying. Rah, rah. Oh, actually, that's not true. It's absolutely. Or not even, true. actually. Um. And the other one was the bloody the local death toll, because that got out too. That was a left-wing thing that got out. Yeah. The local death toll's fucking huge, mate. They're fucking killing hundreds of thousands a second, um, essentially. Which it is still high, but it's in the hundreds of thousands. But mm. there were people who were saying it was literally in the millions. And um, it's just not real. Uh, the, 
the bloody trouble with a bloody civilian death toll in Iraq is that that has been fucked around with so much that no yeah. one actually knows. Yeah. And that is fucking outrageous. But that you don't know how many people wrong. have died. That is that You can't fucking count the amount of locals that have fucking died in a fucking conflict. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It's not like they didn't have census information. It wasn't like they were fucking living in caves. They were a fucking modern, fucking autocratic um, dictatorship. Yeah. They knew shit. But they, they knew where everyone yeah, was. They knew where everyone was. They knew fucking who everyone was and what they were fucking doing. They had fucking a million fucking spies out doing it. Mm. And, you know, hey, no one's saying that Saddam Hussein was a nice guy. He was a dickhead, sure. And no one's saying that fucking it was a perfect system in Iraq. And, of course, when Saddam Hussein decided to threaten the world fucking oil system, then yes, sure, maybe he should have got a slap. I don't know. I'm not a fucking genius. I wouldn't know. But the idea, the idea that locals fractured so fast in that country that they fucked up their own death records to, to try and um, uh, give their own personal piece of Iraq warlord uh, space um, uh, more fucking airtime is just disgusting. And I fucking, for one, am just completely putrefied by the whole fucking mess of it. But that's just me. Yeah, yeah, you know, this, yeah, com complete modern collapse country. of what was a modern functioning country into, you know, a murder pit. Yeah, is, um, fuck that, Roll, ruled by fucking, fucking warlords and clerical fucking monsters. Oh, yeah, come on, give me more of that. Democracy will bloom in the desert. Yeah, yeah okay. fucking right. Apparently without US military invention, if, intervention, if you look what's been happening in the last yeah, year. Yeah, whoops a daisy. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Whoops a daisy. Life's Oops. complex. Looks, Life is complex. Looks is what like we're uh, modern fucking. Um, uh, looks like modern communication and a sense of um, youthful entitlement. Fucking actually. Uh, yeah. Get can shit do done. stuff. <clears throat> yeah. It's like yeah. Uh, if we if we miss out on this boom, you're in it. Yeah. Oh, we've missed out. You're now fucking in it. <laughs> you have to go. I'm yeah. sorry. You have fucked up. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why these countries cut off the phone system cut off the internet, try and cut down any communication network, because the penny dropped, oh wait, these young people know more about communication than we do. Mm. They can organise asymmetrically faster and better than we can. Better it's not just can. the terrorists who do asymmetric warfare, it's just young people who go, you know what? Fuck you guys. Yeah, I can talk um, to more people on my fucking Blackberry than you can on your sat phone, mm. dickhead. Yeah. yeah. And Let's fuck these guys up. That's Mom, taking crazy. That's taking the inevitable path in England as well, uh, with people just jumping out saying, oh, well, we've got to shut down these Blackberries. <laughs> or the government's got to have a back door into every communication. Yeah, righto. It's just, and people who say that when you... What? Like, there's not enough surveillance? And some people are trying to talk up with, or, because England's the most surveilled country in the world. You it's like, betcha. There's cameras camera every five feet. Everywhere, right? um, you want to go to London? Trust me, they've seen you, mate. Yeah, so, uh, they, people are trying to say, oh, now they're proving their worth, because we'll be able to arrest some of these people because they're on CCTV. They're wearing fucking, 90% of them are wearing masks, right? But the bit I want to point out to you is they say these CCTVs, they go, oh, you know, prevent crime. It doesn't affect crime. Massive surveillance doesn't affect crime because people who do crimes assume they're not getting caught. No one does a crime and goes, oh, I'm probably going to get caught straight after I hold up this 7-Eleven. They don't do that, right? They go, I'm going to rob this 7-Eleven off my head on crack and I'll be fine and no one will ever get me. I'm going to... Give you a statistic. Give you, and this might, it might just blow your mind. If you were going to rob a 7-Eleven, right? If you were going to do it, not, not that you are, but just say you were, you'd get on a tram or public convenience of cheapness, wouldn't you, mm. with a mask in your bag, eh, and you'd get off the tram at another suburb where you didn't live, and you'd walk into a 7-Eleven there, put on your mask, and uh, menace that person with your weapon and get fucking paid, and then fuck off. What you wouldn't do, what you wouldn't do, is walk up to your local 7-Eleven, the one that you shop at all the time, you wouldn't walk in there and menace them, would you? No. Apparently though, 80% of 7-Eleven robberies are done in that manner.
people rob their, their own, own neighbourhood. Their own where they're fucking known. neighbourhood where they're known. People know these people. So people who claim that CCTV prevents crime, it's bullshit. It helps detect crime after the fact. But it doesn't, it doesn't make crime. you safer. It doesn't make less crime. Never it, has. It, it like uh, the awful bombings that happened a few years ago mm. in London. Okay, it did help them identify after the fact who the bombers were. It did nothing to stop them. No. Okay, the only thing that stops crime and particularly stops sort of long game crime like terrorism, planned events like that is investigation, yeah. police work, and spending money on surveillance and bullshit at airports takes the money away from where it should be in investigation mm. and surveillance. And it's just, it's all about theatre. Cameras are visi visible. Poorly paid fuckwits at airports making you take your jocks off and go, that's visible. It's not effective, but it's visible. It's, it's Theater. It's, it's a good theatre and it stops a good 70% of dickheads taking stupid things on planes. Um, but if if you were going to seriously fuck up uh, something on a plane, there's a lot of different ways to get beyond um, the theatre. And not least, the theatre is public. That's what they think works. What that does is tell some dickhead who wants to do something bad, okay, that's what they check. What are they missing? And Because what they check is really obvious and open and out there. Yeah. So then you just go, okay, they're stopping last week's threat. What haven't they thought of yet? Yeah, what's, that's what's the next threat. Yeah. Seriously, and I mean... And being Australians, that's what we think of yeah. all of the time. How do I steal the next thing? The, the, the old joke, well, it's not a joke, I call it a joke, but it's what Bush and the utter fuckwits said after September 11th. They attacked us because they hate our freedoms. A, bullshit. B, if that was their motivation, they fucking won because all the freedoms got taken away. The, the stupidity blows my mind. And seriously, at this point, the idea of having another big uh, visible strike like the Twin Towers is unlikely, not impossible, but unlikely. But if I, if I was a shitbag terrorist, um, I would just be trying to fuck up the lives of Americans more and more, and that would be easy. You know, I would do, I would do the buck bomb. I would actually have an explosive jammed up my ass, and then I would get on the plane and I would make a big show of, there's a bomb up my ass. And then I'd just say, besides the fact, and I wouldn't detonate it either. I'd make sure I got to the ground and got arrested, and then I'd probably blow it up when it was on the ground. So everyone knew. So everyone knew the terrorist had the bomb up his ass. The last vestige of your dignity as a traveller is gone. Because we would then escalate from pat downs and backscatter x rays. Thanks, man. To <laughs> Thanks, man. I thought this day would never come. Yeah. To I need a full cavity search. Yeah. Bend Come over, on. grab okay. your ankles. Wow! That gets good. Uh, it's a bit deeper, though. Come on! <laughs> yeah. I got it right up there! Whoa. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. you got a spoon, haven't you? Anyway. There, there, there was a fake story that a lot of people believed was real, that uh, a gay guy whose sexual kink was public humiliation um, deliberately acted suspicious at an American airport, so he got the pat down, and he got a massive boner and was rubbing up against... Um, the uh, TSA guy and, and ejaculated all over him, oh. and and was then up on assault charges. Turned out to not be of true. It didn't happen. Yeah. But but we all wanted it to be true. <laughs> we wanted there to be someone who <laughs> yeah. enjoyed the pat down so much that he spooged all over the that TSA guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we believe things we want to believe. Yeah. And when I walk through any airport security, because I have apparatus with me, and I always have apparatus with me. I get the special pat down and I um, was in Kuala Lumpur and I said to the guy who gave me the most special pat down I'd had in the whole trip, I was like, wow, yuch, hello, and I'm, and I'm giving it, okay dude, usually it's dinner and a movie first, hey, <laughs> and I got fucking arrested. <laughs>
I've only ever said that to a doctor. Uh, and I just went, oh no, you're kidding me. And they arrested my ass and I'm just going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. In Kuala Lumpur, that's not a good not, look. Not a good place to be arrested. And I got released in 15 minutes. I had enough time for one cigarette. I just literally got off the plane, had a smoke, and was getting back on the plane. And because I was travelling, oh, business class bumped up, thank you very much, um, they were looking out for me. And they saw me getting dragged off. And they basically, <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh shit. And they put me in the, in the interrogation, and I'm smoking real lots, right? Freaking out. God, oh, I'm gone here. I have no idea. Midnight Express, yeah. you ever seen that movie? You know, mm. I'm just gone. I'm just over it. Because um, I've clearly said something to, to piss him off. And this guy has no English, it turns out. Um, and he was being cautious. Um, oh. Because he, had, he, he, he knew I'd said something funny. Because um, people around me had laughed. And, and generally speaking at airports, that's usually something um, about uh, either what's going on or there's not a bomb up there or there's, you know, when you say the trigger words, bomb or gun, mm. and he wasn't quite sure if I'd said a trigger word, he wasn't, he wasn't, so he, well, fuck it, arrest him. It's not that bad, so he arrested my ass. <laughs> and, and, and then he was talking to his commanding officer going on, oh, you know, I don't know, man, um, he might have said something stupid, um, and hence, you know, it doesn't doesn't hurt me to arrest his dumb white ass, and, yeah. um, you know, for his fucking smart mouth, which has never got him in trouble ever before or since, <laughs> no, anyway, sorry, I was, I won't do it again, um, that doesn't work, <laughs> um, never has, anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm there going, oh, I'm in a foreign country about to get my fucking the shit kicked out of me, oh no, bad, and I've got my uh, apparatus walking stick with me, which is the bad one, it's the bad bendy one that they let you have on the plane, this fucking thing looks like it contains everything bad in the world, and um, so the the airline staff fucking race through and they're speaking um, this fluent Malaysian, and I'm just going, that's good. I don't know what the fuck that is, but that's brilliant. And they're just going, no, nah, man, no, nah, no. Nah. And, and, you know, smiles and photos and touching all around. And they're fucking, um, you know, it's like, you know, oh, fucking, I'm going to meet your mother. And it's like everyone's showing photos of their kids. It's like it's really, they, they fucking, it's the love fest. And they're going, okay, as you put your smoke out, you come with us. <laughs> <laughs> come and Coming very quickly. <laughs> Coming very quickly. Yeah, we can't delay the plane anymore, mate. Get on. Get on. <laughs> you betcha. You have to tell me twice. <laughs> and I was going, what happened there? We'll tell you on the plane, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a picture here. So I got on and they explained to me that the guy just didn't know what I said. And that I thought you were dodgy. He yeah. thought I was dodgy and he thought, fuck it, arrest him anyway. I mean, how can it hurt? Um, he can stay in Kuala Lumpur for 24 hours waiting for a new plane and um, fuck him. Um, yeah. And because I was a <coughs> well healed customer, they were going, no, 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 yeah, and take the first class fucking so into um, the so Kuala Lumpur jail for the night, which apparently is an experience you won't forget. Uh, um, I can imagine. Like I said, I've seen Midnight Express. You know, and yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was really lucky. And then I got arrested in Austria. Uh, Same fucking flight. Can you believe it? Actually, with you, yes, yes I can. Yes, you can. And yes, what I was can. I arrested for? Smoking in the non-smoking area. Ah. And I was smoking happily, smoking happily, and these guys have come up and grabbed me and gone, what, what's going on again? <laughs> Shit, I've got to get to London. I'm dying here. It was a 35-hour flight. Can you believe that? 35 hours, door to door. I just was, at this point, I was 28 hours in, and I'm just like, oh, my brain's coming out my fucking nose. You know, I have to have, you know, I thought I had knees at one point. They'd fucked off. Yeah. You know what I mean? The jet lag was just so severe. It was bright, bright, bright daylight in Vienna. And I'd looked and I saw a bit of Vienna and I'm thinking, fuck, that's bright out there. What <laughs> time is it? And I'm just dying. I'm thinking, I have more tamazepam in my bag. Oh, there's my bag. Oh, it's on the plane. It's on the plane. Damn it. So I got arrested again. And I'm going, what's wrong? What's wrong? And they're going, you're smoking in the non-smoking area. I'm going, no, no, look. And I've looked and there's this big fucking cigarette with a lime through it. I'm going, oh, you're... Fucking no. I thought it was that one. And there was, in the same room, 
It didn't matter, right? Because it's the same fucking Other side room. Of the room. Other yeah. side of the room, fucking smoky over here, and I've gone, I'm so sorry, I just thought I saw that one, and I thought it was, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm, I'll put it out immediately. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, dear. I'm an outskirt and fuckwit. And they thought that was hilarious, because it means it's an outstanding fuckwit. And um, they just lost their shit. <laughs> and because um, they'd never heard an Australian call himself an outstanding fuckwit before. And they just <laughs> thought that was the funniest shit. Well, he's not that bad a bloke. He's all yeah, right. He's all right. The um, flight staff have come around and gone and looked at me like, fucking again? What are you what doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And I'm going, no, that's no, cool, it's cool. And they've let me go and said, look, you can't smoke here. And I'm going, oh, I'm getting that now. I'm going. Yes, here I go over to the other side of the room and smoke. Which is like maybe eight meters. Yeah. <laughs> the poor non smokers. Very arbitrary. The poor non smokers were getting a lot. It wasn't like, uh, you know. Um, you couldn't as such smoke on the plane, but they made sure every seven hours we got off and smoked yeah. somewhere. And, yeah. uh, every, oh God, that was just hellish. Every seven hours, up, down, up, down. Get off, get on, do something. What's your name? And then you get to England, right? And I had to get and to Scotland, and then I had, here's a passport, I'm like, uh, I am 30 hours in at this point, I am fucking a mess, right, and I come up to this guy, and you automatically, right, after you do these flights a couple of times, you automatically just show everybody your passport, cleaners, they get to see your passport, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter who it is, you just show them your passport, you know, your passport photo is starting to really seriously resemble you, a grumpy, fucked up human being, right, so I'm just showing this guy a passport, he's going, what are you here for, the festival, how long are you here for? Oh, three weeks, tops, then I'm gone. <laughs> I wish it was now. <laughs> you know, where are you staying? Oh, with my ex-girlfriend at bloody, bloody the Royal Mile. It's going to be cool. You know, you know, what are you, you know, and so this guy's asking me all these questions and I'm going, why are you asking me these fucking questions for? And he was the immigration officer. I had no idea he had the power to not stamp my passport <laughs> and tell me to fuck off home because I hadn't got a visa. I hadn't worked through the system to get the visa, I'd got the tickets, and because I'd got the return tickets uh, and, and paid them through, and they were for definitive flight dates, yeah? I, yeah. Could, I could push them around, but not very far. Yeah. Maybe, I could push them maybe a month, but not, not beyond that. Um, so because they were definitively coming back, um, I, uh, they, apparently the system... Um, would grant you a visa within um, your time frame because it wasn't like that it was an open-ended ticket. It wasn't like you can stay there. Now, being Australian and going to fucking Britain, um, it's it's they scrutinise you pretty hard because Australians tend to stay there for a few years, yeah. pick up a few grand, and fuck off. Yeah. You know, it's what we do. Um, yes. <laughs> what did you do? I worked in the stock market and stole it. Oh, did you? Good. Yeah, it's good. I fucked off and bought a farm. Um, so. And usually they find, you know, the chick of their dreams and they go home to Australia with a farm and they raise their kids there. It's, it's just the way it works, okay? So they scrutinise the Australians. I'm 30 hours in. I'm a mess, right? He could have said, I am Alice the Wonder Dragon. I would have said, hi, oh, Alice. I love your scales. They're pretty. Yeah. Right? I don't want to say anything, right? He's asking me questions. Fucking, I don't know why they have these people in torture to questioning. Just fucking put them on a plane for fucking an Australian trip. They will just tell you anything. Right? So this guy's just going, wow, what are you doing? Where are you going? Uh, for Scotland. I'm um, staying in Edinburgh. It's going to be great. <laughs> How long have you been here for? Three weeks. Maybe max. Maybe less. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> ready to cry. Ready to yeah, yeah. I'm just crying. It's all good, man. And he stamps and said, Righto, but crank, three months. I go, I don't need three months. And he's looking at me like, You are a dickhead. <laughs> just go, just idiot. go, idiot. You, you've, got, you've got in. I said, I've got in going through it. Oh, right, I get it now. I understand. Thank you. Have a really good day. Where do I go to another plane? Yeah. She said, you're at Heathrow. Heathrow is the biggest airport in the world. You need to see a map and a person. Can I suggest, sir, that getting a coffee might be your most interesting? <laughs> on, you're a genius. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got enough. And my friendly flight star said, Daisy, this way, mate. This way. <laughs> the said, hey, look, I'm out of drink. Yeah. So I reckon um, that might be enough for this little... 
uh, sharing of the wisdom. Yeah. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends and we'll do it again. Absolutely. This is not even a challenge to us to keep this non-stop. No, it's, we're not even trying. Really? One day, really? uh, we'll do it sitting down. Uh, with the camera plugged into a power source, so we can do it for a couple of hours. Yeah, it'd be fun. We can. That'd be we fun, actually. Yeah. That'd be really fun. Yeah. But this is standing up with the camera running on battery, so the camera's probably had enough about now, too. Probably um, looks like it, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. You know, hope we helped you get through some cleaning, or maybe some study, or, or something. The washing up, or, you know, yeah. just we're more interesting than your family. Maybe. Like them. But yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah. I've done that before. So, um, yeah, we'll see you again soon, and um, hope you enjoyed it. See Bye. Yous. Bye. Have a good one.